Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design. I'm so glad you could join me today. This is a tutorial day. Um, this is my project, my February project for the Authentic Design Team, Authentic Papers. And clearly, this is a St. Patrick's Day project. I'm working today with their wonderful um, Clover collection kit. These are the images. And these are the papers, and you can see I had fun cutting this up. Really great patterns. I love the patterns. And you also get two sheets of this great Spectrum cardstock in Kelly Green. And the component sheet, as you can see, I used that up pretty well too. But this is what I've made. This is a five and a half inch square trifold folio with a gatefold cover and a shaker top. And yes, I am going to show you how to make the shaker top. Um, it's got a little bulldog clip over here and you'll see why when we open it up. And I've just decorated this up with a little shamrock and gold ribbon. These are little birdie flowers. These are Wendy Moonlight. Um, really reasonable ribbon, forest green uh, satin with a grow grain edge, a Tim Holtz vignette frame that I have altered. And I just love, love, super love this photo of the Irish man and his wife sitting under the moon. And so I've used this um, sparklets, shaker elements from Buttons Galore and More because it's got little stars and shamrocks in there, which I think is so fun. It has um, half, inch, half inch spines and I've just put some gold metallic string on the spine with some little charms and tied a bow. So let's open it up and take a look inside. It opens out like this, and on this first page, the five and a half inch square page, I've strung a little banner with gold metallic string and just added, you are my treasure. And you can't really put a picture here, but it's cute to look at. Um, this is a mag magnet page, so I had to be careful how much I added here. And then on this side, I'm going to remove this little bulldog clip because that holds this little folio closed. And you'll learn how to make this magnetic belly band. And then here's a little tuck spot with an Irish dancing couple. And tuck spots are one of the quickest things you can do. I didn't even show you how to do this in the tutorial. It's so easy. You just add glue on the very edge. And then you can tuck your image back behind there. And it looks super cute. So this way, I've got a couple more tuck spots, a little Irish hat with the shamrocks. You can put photos here. And this part of the folio measures, I guess I should tell you that probably, uh, four and a quarter by five and a quarter. So you can put decent sized photos in here. And then this folds out like this, this way. And I've got a couple of more sheets of decorative paper. These are three by fours that I just cut down scored a half inch and glued back behind my designer paper before I glued it onto the panel. So you'll learn how to do all of this in the tutorial, no worries. Um, then let me put this clip back on here so I don't lose it. Then this panel folds out and we've got another little tuck spot over here. Again, using a component from the collection, just add a tiny bead of glue on the bottom and then you can tuck your little photos in there, three by fours, photos on the back, photos back behind it, super cute. The center is a really fun, interactive, starts with this belly band that is made, again, with an element from the component sheet. I just scored the edges to make it fit the width of my insert and then glued those down and then a belly band to tuck behind and then in here, this is again an element from the component sheet and that Kelly Green Spectrum cardstock. Here's a recipe for Irish soda bread. How fun for St. Patrick's Day. Then this pulls out from the back. So this is just one of these fun inserts that I love to make. I use up my scraps and I struggled with this one a little bit. You'll get to see that in the tutorial and probably get a good laugh out of it. But you know, sometimes it's late in the day and it's cold and you're tired and you just do stupid things. But it turned out great in the end. And this measures four and five eighths by nine and five eighths. 
and so this picture down here is a little larger than this one and these are tuck spots again so you can do a photo here a photo here a photo here which is really fun and then this just tucks back behind this panel so that's a fun thing and then a center pocket and again you'll learn how to do the pocket in the tutorial and we've got a little insert in here I love this dancing couple again just using scraps from my table to make this little folio that is four and an eighth inches wide by let me see that's six and a half and one and a half is eight and then I just scored it at three and a quarter three and a quarter to make this little tea bag wallet I've got to have green tea it's St. Patrick's Day people so that is the project everything just tucks in neat and tidy this folds over this folds over i decorated the back panel with this great green and cream stripe and if you're ready now to get your craft on hang around we will do the tutorial so you can learn how to make this beautiful clover trifold folio okay let's get started building this base i have one sheet of eight and a half by 11 ivory card stock and i'm going to place this on my scoring tool on the long side and I'm going to line this up at five and a half inches and I'm going to cut. Now I have two five and a half by eight and a half rectangles of ivory card stock and we're going to bring in our scoring tool. Place the long side on your scoring tool. Score at five and a half and score again at, whoops, score again at six. That jumped right out of the groove. Thankfully, that will be covered with um, patterned paper. Then bring in some quarter inch score tape. You can use liquid adhesive if you'd like, but I kind of like to use score tape for this because this way I can make sure it gives me a straight line to follow. And I'm just going to run this on the very end of one piece. And I do have large card stock, like 18 inch long, but I wanted to show you how to do this with eight and a half by 11 because everybody's got eight and a half by 11, I'm sure. So once we've done this, we're just gonna burnish it down, pull this off, bring this other piece in and you're going to line this up right along the inside edge just like so and for whatever reason we've got a little extra piece here but we'll deal with that in just a second so fold this and burnish on your score line then fold again and burnish on your score line bring your scoring tool back in and I'm just going to take this over. I'm going to put this on my. Sometimes this one doesn't like to do this, but we'll give it a try. I've got a guillotine, a large guillotine, but I'm just going to trim that little extra off. I don't know why it does that, even though I lined it up right at five and a half. The only thing I can guess is that the paper wasn't perfectly. Um, 11 inches wide but all fixed see no problem so if that happens to you now you know how to fix it so I'm going to fold this and put this in my corner snug it right up in there and then score again at five and a half and six and this is going to make the little trifold and just burnish along these score lines and there you have it you can do it this way so you have an inside flap or you can do it this way so that you have like a gatefold but that's basically how you create um, a little trifold out of one sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock, which is very handy to know. Now, I have taken 
um, Authentic Spectrum Green Thumb paper, and I've cut it to fit the panels. And um, this again is one of those personal preference things. I like eighth of an inch um, borders. So I've cut to cover this, hold on. I've cut four four and seven eighth by four and seven eighth inch squares. And then for our third panel, which is a little bit shorter, I've cut two four and five eighth by four and seven eighth squares. And then for our little spines, I've cut four, this is just under half an inch. It's like a sixteenth of an inch under half an inch. So these will fit the spines nicely. And I like to do this because um, it helps strengthen that spine. So I'm gonna add these papers to my um, card. And I'll just show you very quickly. Here's a really quick liquid adhesive tip. Go about a fourth of an inch in from the edge. You just need to do a thin bead of your adhesive. Scribble a little bit in the center. Then line this up so you've got that nice thin border and it's even all the way around. So you're just going to do that on each one. The big mistake everybody makes with liquid adhesive is they put it on too thick and they put it on too close to the edge and then it goops all out the sides and they say, oh, I hate liquid adhesive. This is um, Art Institute Dries Clear and you can get this from Country Craft Creations online and I'll put the link below. All right, I'm gonna finish doing this because how boring is that to watch me glue paper to paper? And All right, right so back. as you can see, I've covered my panels with my Spectrum cardstock, and now I've prepared panels of patterned paper to cover that. So I decided I want this to be a gatefold. I think that would be really fun. And let me just pull that out of there. I had to pull this piece back because I decided I wanted to add an element there. So this will actually be my front cover. So for those two short panels, you need to cut your patterned paper to measure four and a half by five and a quarter. And I've done that here. But before I, oh no, I can go ahead and glue this one down. And I've inked all these edges. So your short panels, four and a half by five and a quarter of your patterned paper. And you just want to center that. Just like so. Now, in here, I want to add a flap page. So I cut a five and a quarter inch by 12 inch piece of this pretty um, damask and clover pattern. I scored a half inch hinge on the edge and then scored two four and a half inch panels. So half inch, four and a half, four and a half. And that's going to leave you with this little two and a half inch turn page here. I strengthened this with just a little bit of washi tape because my paper was looking like it wanted to crack. So now I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add adhesive and I know this looks ugly, but once this is done, you will never know that this mistake was made, which is the wonderful thing about working in layers. And it's like I tell my grand girls, there are no mistakes, there are just learning opportunities. But I tend to think on the fly so sometimes an idea comes to me. There we go. And then I'm just going to add adhesive along here. Burnish this down. We've got a little bit of wrinkling going on. Oops, that's bad. Well, we're going to cover that up. You won't see it. See? See how calm I stay? <laughs> oh, okay. All right, I can see that I need to rescore this panel. So I'm not gonna be able to fit this on my scoring tool. I'm just gonna lay my ruler along this edge and gently fold. 
but I'd rather do that than be at risk. And I'm turning this gently because paper um, will crack if you're too abrupt with it. But once you get it turned, then you can burnish it down. So here's what we have. Now we have a pullout. Fun, right? All right, I'm going to put this on my cutting tool, actually. I'm just going to cut this extra flap off, and I'll tell you why. It is, um, it is this second piece that's hanging out over the front, and I don't like the way that looks. So I'm just going to put this on here and trim it. And that is much better. I'm going to take just a little bit more off. Yes, much better. Okay, I'm happier with that. This we can use for something. I'm just going to re-ink these edges. And we still have a pull-out page. And we can do something fun with that. All right. So this is going to go over our front cover like this and before we go any further I want to add some pretty heavy-duty magnets right here so these are basic gray large magnets I think you can get these at Country Craft Creations if you can't Tamara forgive me I know you can get the small ones there and this is gonna line up okay so this is how I do magnets Peel the back off. This is a positive. And I want to bring this in far enough from the edge that it will be easy to cover. And I'm going to take a little bit of half inch score tape because this is a big magnet and just add this here. And that will keep that from sliding around. Now I'm going to grab a negative magnet. See how that lays right on top of there? Peel off the backer. Close this. Make sure your spines are square and even. Then press that down. And when you lift it up, it's in the exact right spot to catch that magnet. So another little piece of score tape right there. And these will be covered up with patterned paper. That's why we did this at this point in the game. But look, see, now we've got a magnetic closure. And that's kind of fun. I like that. And then we've got a pull out. Also fun. All right. I'm going to go ahead and cover for the large panels in here. You want to cut your designer papers to five and a quarter by five and a quarter. And then for the short panels, just to refresh your memory, four and a half by five and a quarter. So I'll, be, I'll do this and I'll be right All back. right, so I've got my patterned paper added here. And we've got our magnets in place, which is very cool. Now, what I want to do is show you how to cover this up. So I just took that extra flap that we cut off this and I inked it up. So this I trimmed up the little extra part. So this ends up being two and three eighths by five and a quarter. And we're just going to adhere this and then we have kind of a split design page and we'll bring that together with an element. Line our edges up like so. And now you can't see that magnet, but it's there to meet with that magnet, which is fun. So the other thing we need to do is develop a way to keep this from flopping open. And I'm gonna do that from the outside with a bulldog clip, and we'll, when we get to finishing the outside, we'll do that. But um, this center panel, I wanna show you how to do the pocket. All right, now we're gonna cut this shaped pocket. And this is six and a quarter by three, because you want the piece for your pocket to be an inch wider than your panel, which ours is five and a quarter. And I like my pockets to be about two and a half inches deep. So when I score my half inch on the bottom, that's what this will be. 
So this is six and a quarter by three. And this is just an oval die, and I'm placing it on the pocket. I'm gonna glue this down and just flip this around and double check myself again. If it's a little bit off, it doesn't matter, but if it's way off, it looks not so great. So almost an inch and a half and almost an inch and a half. So we're really dead on. I'm just gonna run this through my die cutting machine. There you go, there's your pretty edge. Now if I can salvage this, I like to save these. These make super cute turn tabs. So we could add a turn tab um, on the front cover. We could add, I mean, there's lots of things we can do. So I'm gonna hold on to this in case I decide I wanna use it. Now you know how to cut those pockets. And then I'm just gonna ink this. And I'm going to score half inch on the bottom and a half inch on each side. And for me, it's just easier to, when I'm doing this on camera, to turn it like that. And we're just going to fold this up. We've made these so many times before, you could probably tell me how to make them. But I always like to show, just in case there's somebody new watching. Coming in with our scissors, we're gonna cut up to the score line and then angle out. And that's gonna make that pocket fold really pretty. Bring in my adhesive. Put a little bit of adhesive right here in the corner. Fold this over and burnish it. Same thing here. Now all we have to do is glue this in. I always like to double check it before I put any adhesive on. But you can see it's a perfect fit, just like that. Easy peasy. Now I will show you one more thing. I forgot to tell you this. When I put my spectrum papers down, I did not glue the top of this back panel. And the reason I didn't do that is that I wanted to create a little insert to go in there. So this is more of that Spectrum card stock. I just cut this from the extra piece I had left. And this is four and five eighths inches wide by 10 inches long. And then I've cut panels to cover it. I've got four panels and two of them, these will be, this will be the one that comes out the front, four and a half, by four and a half and this of course that is two and then the longer ones are four and a half by five i want the polka dots on the front on mine you can do whatever you want and i'm going to score this at four and a half and then i'm going to fold it now i think it's fun to add a little decorative edge so i'm going to bring in my crocodile. This is the cloud and scallop. I've had this forever. I don't even know if crocodile still makes this, but um, you probably have some decorative punches in your stash that you can use. I want to crop these corners. So you see, you just stick that, these little wings on the side, it comes like this. You open up the little wings, you put your corner and punch. It's a real hand saver. I like these crocodile punches. For the inside one, you want to make sure you crop your corners at the top. And this is going to tuck in back behind our center pocket. Okay, sometimes you have to take your ruler and go in there and loosen it up a little bit. I've done all that burnishing to tighten the paper down. So just take your ruler. Now it should go because 
There, see, I just needed to be loosened up. So now we're gonna address the issue of this floppy piece here. I don't like the way that flops around. So I've taken a strip, just was just a trimmed off piece of my Spectrum cardstock, and I'm gonna lay it right down the center of this panel. Make sure I'll be able to. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm I've got this lined up, and now we're just gonna gently fold this. Now I know where to place my fold. I'm gonna gently score right where I folded it, just to make sure we have a nice straight fold line. And I'm just going in the center to the edge, but not into the fold. Perfect. All right. So I'm just going to make, I'll just go straight cut. Now we have a magnet right here. That's why I placed it there. And we want to bring in our magnet. Not sure which one we want. Okay. We want the sticky side to attach here. So we're going to peel off the sticky. We're going to close this and pick that magnet up. Just like that. Easy as you please. So I'll put a little piece of washi tape over my magnet. These little banners are from the component, the 12 by 12 component sheet right here. And I'm going to adhere them back to back. And this is going to look really neat. So this one's going to go all the way to the edge here. And this one. Going to go all the way to the edge here going to line those up, press them, and voila, there we go. That's fun, right? Let's get to work on the shaker for this folio. This is a Tim Holtz vignette frame. These are little wooden frames. This one measures about three and a quarter by about four and a half. So I've cut a little piece of clear acetate to fit the back and I've colored this this was um, this light blonde color that you're seeing here and I colored it with distress spray stain in hickory smoke this one and then when that was dry I hit it with some tarnished brass just to give it a little shine and it's a nice vintage finish but it looks really cool all right, and we're gonna burnish this down really well. This frame has to be completely dry before you add the acetate sheet or the glue will not stick. Looks pretty good. I like these frames because of the width of the back. Um, it makes it very easy to add foam tape. So I like to do two layers of foam tape because then I find that my sequins and such move easily. So I'm just going to go around once. point of my scissors to just make that butt up a little more evenly. I'm going to add my second layer. And I just want to make sure this is really 
pressed down firmly. So this is the image I want to put in my frame and I'll just show you. See? It looks really cute. I love this couple. So these are my sequins. These are Lucky Charms from Buttons Galore and More. These are their sparklets, which I just love. So I'm actually going to put these in the center of my image. Probably about half a package is good. Now I'm going to peel off my tape. And you only get one chance to do this. So take your time. And just press that down. Lift up. Look how cute. Look how cute and it feels like I have a leak. I do. So I need to come back. I'm going to cover the back with a larger piece of paper. I didn't quite get that covered up, but this is not the end of the world. And then it doesn't even matter what the pattern is because you're not going to see it. We're just going to adhere this to seal that leak. What I was doing. But we're just going to press that down there. And I hope that, that takes care of any leak. Yeah, we're good now. Look how cute. It's just um, quarter inch gingham, inch score tape. And I'm just gonna real quick get the perimeter. Cut my ribbon. I'm just going to put this in the center here. Oops. Burnish it down really well. But I just like how finished this makes the shaker box look. Cut your ribbon longer than you think you're going to need it because that way overlapping is not a big deal. But if you come up short and you have a gap, then that's kind of a pain. All right. Look at that. See? So it looks really finished from the side and the top. So now we are ready to add our components on the cover. So these are little circulars. I wish I had thought to put those inside the shaker. Wouldn't that have been cute? But I didn't, so they're not. But instead, I'm going to lay these down the side. Lucky you. Then space down. And I was going to put these up on pop dots, but you'll see why I didn't do that. Shamrock. Than Lucky Me. And I think it goes nice with our picture of the Irish couple sitting on a stump. So there's that. Then my glue gun is hot. So we're just going to put our glue, hot glue, on the back of our shaker element. Everything square and straight. And I want this to go just the side of those little buttons. Cute, cute, cute. I love it. I'm just gonna, I'm just burnishing that down on the back. All right, now I used, this is forest green um, 
satin with a grosgrain edge. And I think I want this bow to go right there. Right in the corner of our photo. I'm just going to hold that there for a second while it sets. Very quickly tied this little bow out of gold metallic string and I'm just done twisting it. So it will look pretty. Just a little spot of glue right there. Hold that in place. Just for a change of pace. And I'm only going to, don't faint, but I'm only going to add one flower because I think that's all we need. That's a good thing because I'm almost out of hot glue. So there's our flower. So there we are, finished. How cute is that? Thank you for joining me. Uh, there will be some still photos to follow. I will have a linked supply list on my blog and I will put the link to my blog below so that you can find me. And if you'd like to purchase this in my Etsy shop, it might still be there. Sometimes they sell out really fast. But anyway, um, happy St. Patrick's Day, and I'm going to go get my craft done.